So this is the part two of the conversation that I'm having with Professor L.D. Russell. And uh, I, you know, specifically break down uh, these parts. Like I never imagined that uh, my guest would be so gracious in giving me their time. And, you know, this generation has become very attention deficit. And I don't want it to get so lengthy or that they're like, okay, let me just <laughs> get away with it. So I just... Oh, yeah making it to parts and it would make sense. So, sir, if you want to just pick up from where we stopped, we can do yes. that. Yes. You were talking about earlier generations. And, and if, I, if I was understanding you, you know what their example might offer to us today. And in my latest address, I was um, honored to give the baccalaureate address to the graduating seniors this year. And one of the things that I talked to them about, uh, particularly considering what they have been through, not only in the last couple of years, but in their lifetimes, right? Let's just say uh, 20 to 22 years of age, right? Um, they were born into the trauma of 9-11, right? Which just sent a shockwave through the United States and much of the world. Um, about halfway through their lives, they experienced a financial collapse that surely affected many of their families. And now, it, it, you know, where they are in their lives right now, they are emerging from a global pandemic that just, you know, shut down everything and stole so much from so many people, uh, including some people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just mentioned to them, I could understand if you're looking into the future and you're very unsure about it. You know, does life have it out in for me somehow, right? Is this the way it's always going to be? And what I asked them to do was just uh, think about um, here, here um, those who were born into about 100 years ago into the trauma of World War One, right? Global, just an awful, awful yeah. uh, war with so many ramifications, right? Those who were born at that time in their teens had to live through the Great Depression. Right. right? Just a global shock, right? And when they become when they became young people, they were the ones who were asked to fight World War II, a yeah. global conflagration that took the lives of 50 million people, right? Again, you could understand if they felt shell-shocked at that point. Right. But when we look back on that generation today, they are remembered as the greatest generation because they rebuilt the world that had been destroyed by those wars. The world in which we live today was largely, the foundation for it was largely laid by that generation. And so I'm looking at these young people and I'm asking them, you know, could it be, could it be that the difficulties you've had in your lives up to this point are not gonna hold you back if anything, they are preparing you to do great things that you cannot even imagine at this point in your life. That is my hope, right? And my intention is to support that as much as I possibly can, because honestly, I'm still a hippie who wants peace, love, and happiness in the world. <laughs> we can do that. Um, right? that's, that's the least we can support. And I think the choice is up to each one of us, right? What is, what is the world I want to live in and what can I do to help bring it about? Right. And if, again, is that world just for me? Sorry to t talk over you. Or it, will that world be, be even better? Will my community be even better if all of us are able to flourish? You actually stirred a real <laughs> question in my head. Uh, so you talked about the world wars, you know, and mm -hmm. at that time, we were still under the British rule. And yes. being in the British rule, even Indians were sent to fight the war, right? Because oh, yeah. we will be called in. And mm -hmm. um, not taking names, but you know, different countries celebrate their Martyrs Day where I think they remember exactly these veterans, right? Who fought during mm -hmm. those wars. Mm -hmm. And some, sometimes I feel it's, like, as I'm getting older, I think it's so important to to remember those people who have sacrificed their lives for us in some way or the other because and and it's so good that uh, these countries set that example right remembering the ones who gave their lives irrespective mm -hmm. of who they were because it just made me realize right now talking to you that there could have been indians who fought those war 
Oh, yeah. She never remembered them. And they could well, unfortunately, particularly here in the West, I don't know about in India, but no, they, they do not get any attention at all. And that is unfair. Right. I mean, maybe if, if it was many, many generations back, what if it was one of my great, great grandfathers, like 10 times my great grandfather and mm -hmm. don't know about him or her, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the reason why it's so important to uh, commemorate the ones who have died for us and made sure that we at least have the basic facilities and you know the fact that I'm born and raised in Mumbai is no joke right like my great grandfathers I'm the fifth generation and uh, it wouldn't wow. have happened and sometimes I feel like uh, I didn't do anything else I didn't add any cherry on the top because I didn't go any further <laughs> right <laughs> well you still have some time left to accomplish some things and I have, I have a feeling, Shruti, that you, you're gonna, your life is going to be very valuable to, to your community and to the world more generally because you're open-minded. I mean, just that's so obvious in this conversation. Here we sit, as we uh, touched on earlier before we started this conversation, on opposite sides of the world, right, from radically different cultures, different religious backgrounds, all right, different genders, uh, different ages, and yet the connection from the get-go, right, yes. it is is true and deep, and and very much appreciated on my, on my part. Oh, please, I'm, I'm speechless right now, and I still have a couple of questions to ask to you. But <laughs> I, in my wildest dream, first of all, I I never thought that I would get the opportunity to talk to you. The fact mm -hmm. that I'm doing. I'm just so happy that I didn't kill this chance, you know, feeding the negative thoughts in my head that this won't happen mm -hmm. and uh, getting a compliment and the fact that you sense or see something in me, uh, it makes, you know, it makes my journey a little bit more meaningful because like we were talking earlier, sometimes when you're on your hero's journey, if we were to say, you feel mm -hmm. lost, alone. And I, mean, I don't remember being scared of being alone. I've been a you know lone warrior all my life or a lone wolf or whatever they call. So like that's my cup of tea. So that doesn't scare me. But sometimes you feel like, okay, what am I doing? Is it like all a lost game? But you showing some faith in me means a lot. Uh, the day I'll feel down, I'll probably get back to this video, play this part again and again whenever I would need and just get myself back up. That's wonderful. And you know, the next time I'm feeling down, I might do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wonderful to make connections in the world, right? It is. That's the favorite okay. thing of my life. Like, it, it always has been. And I'm so, so humbled that you have such wonderful things to say for me. Like, I'm still nothing. And you've achieved so much in your life. Oh, I know. <laughs> Look at your YouTube page. I mean, you have interviewed some really important, very interesting people. And, and you, and you manage to speak with them in a way that draws out of them what it is that they do and what is important to them. And that's, that has to be helpful to your viewers as well. I don't know about that. I'm just trying to, you know, share wisdom as much as possible from all you great yeah. folks and mm -hmm. see, because again, like I saw your lectures on YouTube, some mm -hmm. shouldn't feel that I need to pay a price to uh, learn from a founder an or an entrepreneur or an uh, expert. And enough mm -hmm. of all those, I, I want to ask you a very, very important question. Uh, it's, yeah. it's very important. My third and final question for you is the current times that we live in, when there are disputes in the name of religion. Mm -hmm. and I think uh, that has always been the case, right? Like disputes in the name of religion. Oh, yeah. how, how, in your opinion, can this situation be handled in a better way? Mm -hmm. That is a, an excellent question. That is an excellent question. And in, just in terms of the role of religion in that matrix, if you will, yeah. um, religion can be a source of darkness. It can be a source of prejudice. It can be a source of persecution. 
um, even genocide. If you look at the history of religion, the history of human culture, really. But it can also be a force for liberation, right? For compassion, for lifting up, for connection, connection beyond borders. Um, and, and so much of it, and again, this is not just religion. Cultures can be the same way, right? I, I'm living in a moment in the United States right now that is as divided as I have ever seen it, even more so than the late 60s and early 70s. And that was a time when people were really at each other's throats. Um, and the question is, how will we move forward, yeah. right? Are we just gonna go into the abyss of disagreement and shouting at each other and canceling each other, even wounding each other, whether psychologically or physically, or will we take a brighter path, right? Will we find ways to come together and communicate? And so in my classroom, particularly, I would say over the last six years, if I can be honest, okay, you know, my grandmother told me the two things you don't talk about in polite company are religion and politics, and I'm about to do both. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. since, since Donald Trump came on the political scene, uh, the effect that his thinking has had in the United States and eventually on a global scale has altered the way that I function in my classroom. More and more, I have spent time with students asking them to think about and consider and try to help me come up with ways to answer the question that you asked, right? How is it that I can communicate with someone I disagree with? And the more strongly I disagree with them, the more important it seems to me that we be able to communicate. Otherwise, we're at loggerheads, right? And the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. Um, and honestly, Shruti, I'm not sure we have an answer to that question yet, right? We're still learning as a species, right? Part of our evolution, I think, and, and particularly in this moment, is how is it that we finally, finally figure out how to live with each other in a way that is peaceful and understanding and supportive of everyone, right? I'd see the potential in humans but some days, oh, it's tough to, you know, to hold on to that hope that we, yeah. that, that, that will happen. Right. And so one of the things that I try to practice myself and certainly encourage in others, because I see the positive effect it can have is listening and listening carefully and not just listening for a break in the in the conversation so that you can you know add your next point to prove that you're right but really listening to someone else again particularly if i disagree with them asking myself why do you disagree right and trying to see past the disagreement to to understand that person as a person right in the same way that i have come to my opinions and my views, right? It, it, based on my life experience and the knowledge that I have, I, it's important to assume that that person has done the same thing. And if I, the moment I begin to dismiss the humanity of someone else, then it's all is lost, right? If I can see that humanity and, and part of that means I'm going to have to be vulnerable with that person, right? Uh, and trust that they will be vulnerable with me as well. And understand that I, that that disagreement is an opportunity perhaps for me to learn something new, something different, to gain a fuller, broader understanding because I've been willing to engage with someone um, who, with whom I do not agree. There is one exception though, at least one exception to that rule. This is easy, I think, for me to say as an older, white, straight male, which is to say I'm a member of the dominant culture. I think it can be much more difficult for women and other minorities to engage in this kind of conversation. If you're familiar with the term mansplaining, right? Yes. Where a guy who assumes that, you know, he knows something <laughs> that I he's- I lived the corporate this. world, I know that, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, if someone else, 
is de is denigrating, is dismissing, is damaging your humanity. I don't think you owe that person anything, right? Except distance, right? Yes. But anything short of that, it's just so crucial that we try to open ourselves to hear what others are saying. And in part of what I'm talking about here is empathy, yeah. which is so crucial. And the ability to step over into someone else's shoes, right? Which means stepping out of my own, out of my own cultural bubble into someone else's and seeing the world and this issue that we're discussing through their eyes, right? I mean, it's such a great opportunity to understand more and to be able to work together. I think that's important in our personal lives. It's certainly important in our careers. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's as important for nations as it is for individuals. Absolutely. I mean, that's the precise reason why I had this question because like you talked about your country, I see mm -hmm. the similar or same things happening in mine and not just mine, but in fact, every country on the planet is going through the same thing it's like yes. a new virus was created and this is what we're going through right like, uh -huh. yeah it it's a moment yeah and what do we do and uh i mean already before the pandemic i i remember i used this uh conversation in one of my sessions i i did at one of my organizations where you know most of the times when people just wave at you like hi how are you and they just pass by they just mm -hmm. don't even wait to listen to the answer it's mm -hmm. all like you know for the heck of it we, we were already doing that and we are in very troubled waters right now and if we don't listen yes. to each other yes. it is going to get very difficult I, I think i've said this to somebody before maybe in one of my podcasts also where i had this white u.s manager of mine in one of my places uh, where I was working and uh, you know he would ask me this question hi Shruti how are you and he would just bash with you know the things we had to talk about mm -hmm. and, uh, not just him but I know mansplaining because of thank you for uh, some covert narcissist uh -huh. worked with <laughs> they helped me understand what covert narcissist and gaslighting means so oh, yes. I've been through a lot of journey thanks to all of them mm -hmm. I learned my lessons in a very very hard way and mm -hmm. I, I made a deal with him I asked him um, like do you ask me this question because you genuinely want to know or is it, you know, because it's just one of the way how we start conversations. And I know I put him in the spot, right? Like, who asks a question like this? And he was very unprepared for. And he's like, Shruti, you know what? This is how we do in America. And I was like, wow, this is great. But can I ask you for something? Can I request you something? Like, if you feel like asking me how I really am feeling, please, can you ask me this question only then? it would make, make more sense to me. And I understand this because in India also, we've started to do the same way. We just ask for the heck of it, not uh, waiting for the reply, not wanting to listen to that reply. But if you right. want an answer from me and if you genuinely care, please ask me the question that day. And he did. You know, one That's day it happened when he genuinely asked me the question where he was like, I genuinely want to know how to feel. <laughs> and I was like, mission accomplished. I can leave Earth and I can safely go to Mars. <laughs> I love a happy ending, right? Oh, no, your willingness to do that, to go there with him, right? Um, it's important to, for you because you are asking him, if not insisting, that he recognize your humanity, right? But I think it's also important for him because if he takes it in the right way, which apparently he did, it's an opportunity yeah. for him to realize, oh, okay, there's more to this question than I thought. Yeah. I'm so grateful uh, for him that he took uh, in the right way because yes. like qualified yourself as one of the privileged people on the planet. Mm -hmm. He could have taken it in any way and it could have, pardon me, screwed a lot of things for me. Mm -hmm. but the fact that he didn't uh, and he generally asked the question when he wanted to, it made a lot of difference to me, right? Like, right. what's better than that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, gosh. It feels like I've, uh, it's going to sound bizarre, but I think you'll understand. It feels like I've known you since lifetime. And it mm -hmm. feels like this conversation just superseded everything called as, you know, time, space, and other physics dynamics. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to argue with that assessment. Yeah. <laughs> 
and I'm so grateful that you you were kind to me to say yes. And for the people who are who are watching this, he was so gracious towards me. Uh, he also gave me a disclaimer where he mentioned that uh, people might criticize. And are you ready for this? And uh, I, I'm I'm just grateful for you to say that yes to me. And I just had to take you know a lead into that and be right. yes enough to do this. For me, that's just the way humans move through the world, right? That's the world I want to live in, where we all care about each other, right, and support each other. And I and I mean it when I say I'm really grateful for the opportunity that you were interested in learning more about me, about my teaching, and for the opportunity. Um, perhaps, as you say, right? I, I hope that some of your viewers um, are finding this conversation helpful in their own journeys. I would love to have a degree in your class. I don't know how I get it or how I earn it. But I think that's... <laughs> well, you, if you watch those uh, YouTube videos, that's basically my class, so... It, they are. I, I mean, the, the fact that I, I reached out to you, I reached out to you already thinking of you as my teacher. And you know, uh, there is this great epic called Mahabharat, which we have in India. Yes. And yes. it has a student by the name Eklavya. Who, who saw a royal family of Pandavas and Kauravas learning from a great, great teacher by the name Drona. And he used to just see him from a distance and learn from him the art of archery. Wow. So That's remarkable. <laughs> I love that story. If technology was a religion, we all would have been so much united, right? <laughs> because we all <laughs> use it. <laughs> that is for sure yeah. and for some people i think it is the kind and of we, religion, we, yeah. we would all have called each other like a teacher or a student to someone like i think of myself as a student to you i don't know if you have accepted me as a student yet but i accepted you as oh, of course. When I of course. and not only that you're an honorary member of my tribe okay <laughs> and i hope you would feel the same way about me Absolutely. <laughs> I've learned, i have learned from you today shruti about Indian culture, about Hinduism, about how to be a good human. I, I love that story about you and your manager. <laughs> I mean, it was an added responsibility on me, I would like to say very honestly, because it was just not me meeting a teacher who I have idolized miles apart and watching his lectures over YouTube, but mm -hmm. it was also me representing my country, right? Yes. And I, I just couldn't get it wrong in any way <laughs> <laughs> uh, more connections like this need to happen all the time right that is how we're going to move together that's uh, move forward together absolutely uh, i i don't feel like wrapping this up because i feel it would be very weird to say i want to be in touch with you i don't know if if you no 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 that's perfectly it. fine that's perfectly <laughs> but fine if you um, i'm on yeah, I'm on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. If you are there, LinkedIn, we're already connected there. That's the only place I am. Like, I stopped using Facebook and I'm very primitive. You know, I told you I'm an old soul. I'm not on any other platforms. You, Good for you. You Good for you. <laughs> you're saving yourself a lot of headaches. Even LinkedIn is too much for me, you know, at times because you post something there and people, I just got a comment today where somebody mentioned your content is always polarizing and uh, while I find that statement remarkable I mean always if anybody not just me you anybody would say something yeah. anywhere it is right. going to have difference of opinion like that's how we grow and uh, well I, I'm on uh, social media for my tribe I, I need to keep up with my with my tribe you like I said, you're living many, many lifetimes in just one. I don't know what your soul's game is. Maybe that's why I'm so tired. And I started writing on Medium, which is another platform, you know. I started writing during the pandemic. I always wanted to, but I never had the time. Yeah. So I, I just knew that from it's in my genes from my grandparents or somewhere that they mm -hmm. would write and I had to write. And uh, you know, the name I gave to my blog is uh, yeah. Shruti Gypsy Soul. A lot of people were like, why would you say that? I was like, that is how I feel. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> have you heard the expression, not all who wander are lost? Yes. I love that expression. I love that expression. Yeah. <laughs> Just because we're wanderers doesn't mean we're lost. 
though occasionally we might be. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we always end up taking a path less traveled because there's less traffic and we are just heading <laughs> away. That's wisdom <laughs> speaking right there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're just trying to, you know, pave the way for maybe people who can take that road. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Sir, if you would have any parting thoughts that you may want to add, please, please, please feel free to do so. Well, I certainly want to express my thanks to you and to your viewers for their patience. Um, I hope they have found our conversation to be enlightening. Um, and I just, I, I don't know how else to say it. We are all in this thing together, right? The challenges that we face can divide us or they can unite us. The choice is ours. And I say we come together and get this thing done, right? Let us create that world where we all live together in peace and harmony and mutual support, right? Let's, let's do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I don't think so. I could have called a better guest in the crisis and times that we are living in and uh, have this open-minded conversation and probably open-ended too, because uh, if it's open-minded, it should stir some more questions in, in people's heart and soul and mind and brain or whatever they might be operating with. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you gave me your precious time, sir. It means a lot to me. And thank you for being a guru to me. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.